Hello everyone. Today is the turn of macroeconomics and questions relevant to macro macroeconomics are quite tricky. And the first topic I'm going to discuss for macroeconomics is inflation, unemployment and economic growth. Inflation is basically persistent rise in general price level and unemployment is a phenomena when a job seeker after due search is unable to find a job. And economic growth is rise in real GDP of the country and uh, directly we are going to the questions and I will be discussing the topic along with the question, whatever question has been asked here. So starting with question number one, which of the following is likely to be a disadvantage of economic growth? So focus on the term disadvantage. Fall in tax, uh, government tax revenue falls. If there is economic growth, then tax revenue of the government will rise and it will not fall. So this is not correct answer. The level of unemployment rises. Economic growth creates more job opportunities or employment increases. Unemployment falls. So it is not correct answer. The standard of living of the population falls. Again, this is advantage uh, when economic growth occurs. Standard of living increases instead of falling. So this is not correct. And now moving to option B, resources are depleted. So this is the disadvantage. So correct answer is answer B. Depleted mean resources will be over exhausted by uh, the economy through over utilization and over exploitation. Question number two says in a country where the government pays the unemployed a small weekly income, there is a reduction in consumer expenditure and as a result, unemployment increases. What will be the effect on tax revenue of the government and on the government expenditure? As you can see that consumer expenditure are decreasing and similarly unemployment um, is also increasing. So when unemployment is increasing and consumer expenditure are also falling, then it means that government will get tax revenue lesser than before. So option A and B can be correct answer. So we can cross C and D. What about government expenditure? Government expenditure will rise since we have already crossed C and D. So we can evaluate A and B now. Government expenditure will increase instead of decreasing because when there is unemployment, government will have to pay more unemployment allowances to the uh, individuals in the country. So government expenditure will rise. So B is correct option. Now moving to question number three. Which of the following is an example of cyclical unemployment? Cyclical unemployment is basically caused by a decline in overall uh, aggregate demand in, in the economy. It may be within the country or it may be overall in the world. So option D says hotels employ fewer people in a rainy period. So this is seasonal unemployment, not cyclical unemployment. Fishermen sell their boats. Uh, owing to a reduction in fish stock, this is uh, again regional unemployment because a certain profession or region is affected and cleaners lose their jobs as more machines are used. This is technological unemployment because because of machines we are making people unemployed and airline cuts jobs in a world recession. So this is basically cyclical unemployment because overall economic recession decreases aggregate demand and whenever there is decrease in aggregate demand it causes cyclical unemployment so option a is correct answer now moving to question number four and question number four says in constructing a retail price index what is not used retail price index is basically used to calculate the rate of inflation and when we find rate of inflation we need base here so this is needed examiner is saying that but it's not used so base year is used base year means previous year any previous year number two is the basket of goods prices of basket of goods these are also used while calculating retail price index or inflation a weight given to each product we use weightage as well because in weighted retail price index we use uh, weights as well and weight shows expenditure pattern of consumer on each product so this is also used examiner is, is asking okay, what is not used so all these three options are used while calculating retail price index so option c that is the rate of interest this is not used while calculating rate of inflation or price index
Now moving to question number six. Inflation in Argentina fell from four hundred percent in nineteen eighties to fifteen percent in nineteen ninety. Nineteen nineties. What could have been a result of this change? Falling price. Price is not falling. Prices are increasing. However, the rate of increase in price is falling. In initially, price rose by four hundred percent, but now it increased. But by fifteen percent, it means that prices are increasing, but with decreasing rate. So price never fell. Fewer exports from Argentina. Um, Argentina's exports would be rising because its demand is increasing and inflation rate is increasing. A trade deficit. Trade deficit means imports will be greater than exports, but this is not the reason for that. Because if inflation rate of Argentina is decreasing as compared to the previous year, then exports may rise and uh, trade should be in surplus instead of deficit. So D is not correct answer. Lower wage rise is the correct answer because whenever wage rate increases with decreasing rate, lower wage rise means that uh, wage rate will rise but with decreasing rate. So it means that now uh, inflation will rise because rise in Wage rate causes cost push inflation. It decreases aggregate supply, and as a result, price increases. So this is aggregate demand, and this is aggregate supply, and this is equilibrium price initially. Whenever there is rise in wage rate, aggregate supply will shift to the left because wage is a supply factor. So aggregate supply will move to the left, leading to rise in price from P to P one. So this rise in price is caused. By rising wage rate. Okay, so C is the correct answer. Now coming to question number seven. In order to reduce unemployment, a government moves one of its department to a different part of the country, even though this is expensive. Right? Which type of unemployment is most likely to be reduced? Okay, so since the department department is moving to the other part, the other region of the country. So it would be a regional unemployment because cyclical unemployment is caused by decline in overall aggregate demand in the world or in the country. So this will not cause any kind of unemployment or employment in overall economy. Rather, there will be there will be a certain part of the country that will be affected. So frictional unemployment is not correct because frictional unemployment is also uh, the type of unemployment which is caused by an individual while moving from one job to another job. And then is regional unemployment definitely this is the correct answer. Seasonal unemployment nothing has been mentioned here that would be causing seasonal unemployment. However, department is moving to the other region of the country, so it is causing regional unemployment. So option C is correct answer. Now moving to question number eight. The diagram shows the annual rate of inflation for a country between two thousand and two thousand three. You can see that rate of inflation is continuously decreasing. So, which statement is true of the period two thousand and two thousand three, two thousand to two thousand three? So, from two thousand uh, to two thousand three, rate of inflation is continuously falling, and this question confuses a lot of students. And they what they do is they quickly pick this option: the retail price index fell. So, this is not correct answer because retail price index. Is not falling; it is increasing. The value of money rose. Value of money is not increasing. The cost of living fell. This is not also not decreasing. Basically, the price level rose. This is the correct option because price is increasing. However, it is increasing with decreasing rates. You can see this is rate of inflation on y-axis. It means in two thousand, prices rose by ten percent. In two thousand one, prices rose by six percent. In two thousand two, prices rose by four percent. In two thousand three, prices rose by around three percent. So it means that in prices are increasing. However, the rate of increase in prices decreasing. So overall price level will be rising. The average prices were let's suppose k one hundred dollars, and then if there is ten percent increase in price in two thousand. And this would be price in nineteen ninety nine, and in two thousand price will increase by ten percent, and now it will be one hundred and ten, and in two thousand two thousand one it increases by ten percent 
sorry, six percent, then it will be one hundred and ten multiplied by six divided by hundred, and you can find the value, and there there may be value around seven or eight dollars. Increase so now the new price will be one hundred and seventy. I'm this just guessing a seven dollar is increased. So new price in two thousand one will be one hundred and seventeen. So you can see that prices in nineteen ninety nine were one hundred. It increased to one hundred and ten in two thousand because of ten percent increase. And in two thousand one, it increased by. Six uh, percent, so new price will be one hundred and seventeen. So in every year till two thousand three, you can calculate like this. So you will see that price is increasing. Overall general prices will be rising. However, the rise in price is decreasing. And technically, this is known as uh, disinflation. When price level increases with decreasing rate, we call it disinflation. Now moving to question number twenty-two. What is most likely to lead to inflation? Inflation is caused by basically demand. There are two types of inflation: demand pull and cost push inflation. Demand pull inflation is caused by increase in aggregate demand. Cost push inflation is caused by decrease in aggregate supply. So, in this question, a decrease in consumer spending. If consumer spending decreases, then aggregate demand will fall. And ag when aggregate demand falls, uh, then inflation will fall instead of increasing. So it will not lead to inflation. A decrease in employment in public sector. If employment falls, then it means the purchasing power of consumers will be low, and when purchasing power of consumers is low, they will spend less, and aggregate demand will fall as a result. Uh, aggregate demand falls, and inflation also decreases. So it will not cause inflation. An increase in uh, income tax. If income tax increases, it means now purchasing power of consumers will fall. And as a result, they will spend less, and when spending falls, aggregate demand decreases, and inflation will fall. So these three options will not lead to inflation. Option C is correct answer. An increase in cost of factor input. Factor input means uh, the factors of production like land, labor, capital, and enterprise. If cost of these factors increases, then definitely it will cause cost push inflation. Aggregate supply will fall because of high cost of factors input. Then definitely aggregate supply will decrease and it will shift to the left. Initially, equilibrium. This is aggregate demand. This is aggregate supply. Equilibrium price is this. If factor input increases, basically cost of factor inputs increases. Like might be there might be rise in wage. There might be rise in raw material cost or interest on loan, etc. So any cost that is increasing. Will lead to shift in aggregate supply to the left, and as a result, price will rise and it will cause cost push inflation. So C is correct answer. Now moving to question number twenty-three: Which type of employment unemployment is generally regarded by economists as the least serious uh, for the economy? So least serious mean all of them are harmful, but which of them is least serious? Technically. Frictional unemployment is least serious. Cyclical unemployment affects overall economy, so it is serious. Regional unemployment affects overall region. This is again serious. Structural unemployment affects certain industry, like for example, if certain industry is closed down, then definitely structural unemployment will be caused. So cyclical unemployment, out of these, cyclical unemployment is most important, most harmful. Regional is less harmful. Structural is also more more harmful, and frictional unemployment is least harmful because frictional unemployment is unemployment of a worker between two jobs. For example, if a person chooses one job and leaves the other, the period in between these two jobs is basically frictional unemployment, and almost this unemployment is basically um, not very harmful for the country because the person who leaves one job. Easily finds a job, another job with same skill. He need not to, he needs not to basically get educated and trained for the new job. He can uh, use the same skill and experience to find a new one. So frictional unemployment is least important. However, cyclical is most important. Afterward, structural is uh, harmful 
or serious or important to be controlled then regional and least is frictional on a problem and so this is it for this video if you are interested to no do further questions this topic contains huge amount of questions you can see okay, how many questions are there in this topic there are 66 questions in this topic and you can if you want to solve all of these questions then uh, i will give you the link in description for this book you can get it from there and the good thing is okay, every answer has been explained explained at the end of uh, every topic so you can revise it so this is it for today's class see you in the next class thank you